right, welcome back. This is the fourth of four videos where we're talking about helicopter tail rotor emergency procedures. The fourth category, and arguably the most confusing and lengthy, is loss of tail rotor control. Uh, there's a couple of subcategories of tail rotor control that are important to emphasize because it could change how we fly the aircraft. The first subcategory is hydraulic malfunctions, the second is a cable malfunction, and the third is foreign object displacement or FOD. Yes, when I'm talking about hydraulics, I'm talking about the main hydraulic system. I'm not talking about the pilot assist servo assembly and the hydraulic boost, which we'll circle back to here in a minute. When I talk about hydraulic problems, there's a number of things that could happen. For example, the failure of the number one tail rotor servo. Ideally, the, number, uh, the backup pump will turn on and provide hydraulic fluid under pressure to power the number two side of the tail rotor servo. Similarly, if you have a number one hydraulic pump malfunction, the backup pump should provide that uh, hydraulic fluid under pressure for the number one. But in both of those situations, if you have a failure of the backup pump to operate for one reason or another, or if you have a leak in the system, and depending on how the backup pump should provide hydraulic fluid under pressure via the LDI, you may or may not lose complete hydraulics of uh, the tail rotor uh, servo. I mentioned the pilot assist servo assembly earlier. Because the H-60 helicopter is a fantastic platform that is far better and superior to many other helicopters, the pilot assist servo assembly will give us hydraulic boost. That hydraulic boost is designed to give us relative tail rotor control between the window of 45 and 120 knots at mission design gross weight. Again, this is a window of balanced flight between those two airspeeds. You should have tail rotor control via your pedals. However, it should be said that outside that window, whether it's slower than 45 or faster than 120, you are endangering the tail rotor cable system by elongating them because of the pressure that you're putting on the pedals. This condition should be avoided and a roll-on landing is recommended between the window of 45 and 120, assuming your gross weight. Okay, so the second subcategory to talk about with regard to loss of tail rotor control is a cable problem. So the H60 has a dual cable feature for redundancy and we, uh, we have an indication of a tail rotor quadrant caution light that lets us know that one or both cables have snapped. Same caution light, two different emergencies. If you get that caution light, the procedure is to check for loss of tail rotor control. You do this by moving the pedals, of course, to see if the helicopter will respond to yaw input with your pedals. If the helicopter yaws appropriately, good news, you only have one cable that's failed. However, if you check for loss of tail rotor control and instead of going left and right with the yaw axis, the nose of the helicopter pitches up and down, uh, you, have, you do not have uh, uh, tail rotor control. You have lost both of your cables. The mechanical mixing unit, which is in the hydraulics compartment of the helicopter, is what's causing that pitch up and down motion of the helicopter. So in the event that you have a loss of both cables, that's bad news, right? Because you can't control the tail anymore. So what the helicopter is designed to do is to have two centering springs uh, fix the pitch of the rotor system, excuse me, the tail rotor system, to seven and a half degrees of pitch. So you can think about it like this. If you have two failed cables, you're looking for two distinct airspeeds. What airspeeds do you say? Well, with the H60 at mission design gross weight, which is 19,462 pounds, those airspeed targets are 45 and 120 knots. This graph will help us uh, talk about how to fly the aircraft accordingly. The blue indicates performance at mission design gross weight, whereas the green line indicates performance if you are less than mission design gross weight, say 18,000 pounds, and the brown indicates what it looks like if you are above mission design, say 21,000 pounds. You'll notice that for heavier, uh, heavier aircraft, the performance window narrows, and the lighter the helicopter is, the wider your performance window is. In other words, the slower, uh, the lighter you are, the slower you can get when you perform your roll on landing in the event of a cable malfunction. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this chart and we're gonna flip it 90 degrees on its axis. And here, this is gonna help us get a pictorial view of how the nose of the helicopter is gonna perform at various airspeeds. It's very important to understand with both a fog condition, which we'll talk about soon, and a cable malfunction, which we're talking about now, that uh, you always wanna find where the nose of the aircraft balances. Sometimes you're gonna be able to do that, like with a cable problem, or with a moderate fog problem. Sometimes you're not gonna be able to find a, a place where we uh, have balanced flight. But as you follow the power curve here, you can see that at 45 and 120 knots, assuming mission design gross weight, you have relatively sufficient anti-torque. 
However, if you decelerate into the bucket region, you have an excess amount of anti-torque, which results in left yaw. Uh, contrastingly, if you are outside the window of 120, you're faster than 120, or you're slower than 45, you have insufficient anti-torque, which will result in a right rotation or a right yaw. We're gonna take this axis and flip it back and take a look at it a little bit differently. If this is the helicopter here, when you're faster than 120 knots, your nose is gonna be right. But as you decelerate, assuming all other things are equal, by that I mean collective, PCL movement, gross weight is standard, you're not drop, dropping tanks or dumping fuel, you're relatively constant. As you decelerate, you're gonna achieve balanced flight at 120. But then as you continue to decelerate, that nose of the aircraft is gonna go left, all the way to the bucket, which is the worst part for excess anti-torque. But then, because of drag, as you decelerate more, you're going to ride the bottom side of the power curve now to achieve balanced flight at that lower target airspeed. In this example, it's 45 knots. But then, once you decelerate to below 45 knots, the nose of the aircraft starts to go to the right. A couple of things that we talked about in previous videos, the cambered fairing will assist with aerodynamic load. The vertical pylon will assist with aerodynamic uh, load with regard to anti-torque. Uh, but that is uh, a good place to stop when you're talking about cable malfunctions or an object displacement uh, could, have, uh, could have a drastic effect on the tailor, especially if it finds out your cables. Uh, so what we're implying here is that you don't necessarily have the control uh, at all or partially to control how much pitch or the magnitude of pitch that you're using. So there's a couple of different uh, sub-categories sub you can use when you're talking about FOD. Uh, fixed pitch high power, fixed pitch low power, or fixed pitch moderate power. Uh, earlier, when we were talking about cable malfunctions, we talked about these charts and how the helicopter will perform at various airspeeds. But when you have a thought out problem, for example, high power, you might not be able to do a roll on landing based on the excessive thrust that is a result of the thought. In which case, you're most likely going to have to come into an OGE hover and have left rotation, excessive anti-torque, left rotation, and then with timing power pull with wind line to dampen the rate of rotation, work your altitude down, almost like positive dynamic stability to dampen out that rate of rotation to affect the landing. Very, very difficult, only under uh, drastic considerations should that be considered, but hopefully you're not fixed pitch, excessive high power. Contrastingly, excessive low power. Uh, this could actually be worse than a complete loss of tail thrust or drive where uh, the nose is going to snap much more violently to the right where auto rotation is the only possibility. However, there's that moderate power level. So you might be thinking, how do we define moderate power level? How do we know if we're high or low? Well, if you fly your power curve, you want to try to aim for where the helicopter attains balanced flight. So if you're at Mission Design Gross Weight, as we talked about earlier with cables and hydraulics, that's gonna be around 45 knots. But as you're, testing, uh, as you're testing that power curve as you fly, if you determine that you're never going to get to that balanced flight due to the amount of FOD that you're experiencing and you're in a high power or a low power situation, uh, you'll know pretty quick. For that moderate, uh, moderate power fixed pitch condition, you can treat it very similarly to a roll on landing using the uh, techniques that we discussed earlier. However, the DI model uh, is helpful to help us understand how the pilot can use things, uh, things that are uh, available to us in the cockpit to better our situation and to control our yaw rate. The DI model, as is depicted here, is kind of a not to scale rudimentary uh, illustration of what the cockpit looks like. You can see the left windscreen and the right windscreen, the pilot co-pilot. Um, you've got a D on this windscreen and you've got an I on that windscreen. D for decrease and I for increase. If you decrease anything, by anything I mean specifically the collectives, the PCLs, you, the gross weight, if you dump, uh, dump tanks or uh, dump fuel rather, uh, the nose of the helicopter is gonna go left. Uh, conversely, if you increase things like your collective or PCLs, uh, whether they're out of the flight detent and you're moving them forward or perhaps even going to lock out under some considerations, the nose of the helicopter is gonna go to the right. So you can use this to your benefit when you're flying these various uh, types of emergencies to kind of have a better understanding of what should take place. 
As a best practice, something that we've noticed here at the branch in Aviation Training Center Mobile is that the flying pilot should fly the aircraft right. By that I mean after touchdown, after you land, the flying pilot should steer the helicopter right with collective pull. The pilot monitoring should steer the helicopter left by having the PCLs out of the flight detent, well out of the flight detent, just enough to effectuate a, a, a droop so that when you decrease the PCLs, the nose will go left. So you're using that main rotor droop induced by the retardation of the PCLs and the flying pilot is counteracting that by steering right and then you can keep your nose alignment on the runway using differential braking to eventually stop the helicopter. That concludes the fourth of four video series talking about tail rotor emergencies inherent in the H60. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sticking with us. See you soon.